formatting styles for multiple choice, presented by the Idaho Digital Accessibility Consortium. When it comes to formatting multiple choice form fields, there are a couple things you need to consider. One, you need to consider whether you are going to have your multiple choice items in a list, whether you're going to have them going across the page in a single line, and whether you're going to have a scale that you need to provide information on what the scale is for users. In this document, we have one of each of those examples. Our first question, what tools are available at your agency to make accessible documents? We identified previously that we want this question to include a few choices for people to select and then also provide an other with a text box option. So the first thing we need to do is add those multiple choices to our document. So I'm going to go ahead and paste those options that we had identified previously. So in this case, um, Adobe Acrobat Pro, Google Docs, Microsoft Office, um, prepared templates, and then other. So these are our multiple choice options. Since we have an other option, we also need to include instructions to tell people what to do with that other choice. In this case, we ask them to please specify what other tools are available, and then we will provide a text space. So for our multiple choice questions, we need to provide space before the answer so we can draw a text or a multiple choice box in using the Adobe Prepare Form tools. In Adobe, we want to make our checkbox about a quarter inch by a quarter inch. So let's move our text over by adding a tab stop just before that half inch mark. That's gonna give us enough space to add a decent size checkbox, but it's not gonna be so far over that we're gonna to have to play around, um, that we're gonna to have to adjust our alignment. If we want to save this style, then we can highlight one of our options, select new style, and I'm gonna call this multiple choice list. And if I look at my formatting for this, my tab stop is where I want it to be. So then I can click OK. So if I need to use that particular style later in my document, I can. So here we have Adobe Acrobat Pro, Google Docs, Microsoft Office, Prepared Templates, and other. Please specify what tools are available. And if you remember, this other we want to have a text box with. And we could add space underneath this option before our next question for the text box. But since we have multiple choice options, these four multiple choice options will have a checkbox and this other will have a checkbox. We have quite a bit of space to the right of the document that we could use for our form or for our text box area. So this is a good option to use the columns feature because we are making our one list appear in two columns. So if we highlight our content, go to layout, columns. There are a few different options. There's one column, two evenly sized columns, three evenly sized columns. There is a column that is smaller on the left, a column that is smaller on the right. With this, we want our first column to be more narrow than our second column. So I'm going to choose this pre-formatted left column. The other thing I want is to only have this other option available in the second column. So I'm going to put my cursor before other on the layout ribbon, select breaks, and I'm going to add a column break. Now I have space for each of my four checkboxes in the first column. And I also have space for a checkbox in the second column and space underneath the other option for a text box. So that's one way to format uh, your multiple choice list using columns. If you, that's a really good option if you have those other text boxes. If you have a list of maybe like eight items um, or 12 items, it might make sense to break them up into smaller column lists that you can have go across the page. Another option we had for multiple choice was kind of having a yes, no, not sure 
type of option. So that only has three options. Um, it's fairly manageable. That's a good opportunity to use the space across the page instead of using a list. So for this question, do you know what tools you need to create accessible documents on the web? We wanted those options to be yes, no, I don't know, or am unsure. Since those are our three options, we really just want to um, go across the page because otherwise we'd have a lot of empty white space on the right and we don't have enough um, to really use the columns feature. So this is another good option to use multiple tab stops. So we already have this multiple choice list and we can use that to grab that first tab stop but we need to add additional space between no and I don't know or am unsure. So let's add another tab stop. Let's go ahead and add a tab stop there. And one, two, three, four. So let's go ahead and add one tab stop um, about a half inch away from our first. And then another tab stop about a half inch away from our second. So we have yes, space, no, space, I don't know where I'm unsure. We can also save this setup as a style. And we want it to be separate from our multiple choice list because we have more than one tab stop. So I'm gonna call this multiple choice single, single line. And if we look at our tab stops under formatting, you'll see there are uh, tab stops at 0.38 inches, 0.88 inches, and 1.38 inches. So they're all evenly spaced. Then if we click OK, we can save that style. So let's say I have another question that has that same setup. Um, how much of your job is dedicated to document creation? Let's just say that was a yes, no, I don't know, or I'm unsure question. Now, if I use the single choice multiple choice single line style, my tab stops will be formatted exactly the same. So this can save you a lot of time as you're working on different questions. The last consideration for multiple choice is kind of the scale or the ranking. Anytime you're adding any kind of a scale, just like our other option in the first uh, example, you have to provide instructions on what those different scales are. So this question right here, what is your comfort level with technology? That is when we identified that we want to provide people with a scale to choose from. So the first step is to add in our text. So I'm just going to paste in these options here, paste as plain text. So here we have a scale one to five. And I've identified what that scale is. So one is not comfortable using technology and don't know who to ask for help. Two, somewhat comfortable using technology and I ask for help when I need it. Three, comfortable using technology and can help others when needed. Four, very comfortable using technology and I look for more ways to learn. Five, extremely comfortable using technology and look for ways to help others. So here's our scale. And after our question, what is your comfort level with technology? We also need to provide kind of that um, instruction language on what to do with this scale. So I'm going to add the sentence. Please select the option that best describes you. And then we have our scale, one, two, three, four, five, down below with our definitions. So here, it's a list and we can use that multiple choice list for our formatting. And it will follow the same style as the one we had up above in our first example. And we don't have to do anything else with this. The spacing is the same, the tab stops are the same. So we're following a consistent alignment throughout the document. And there you have it, three ways to format your multiple choice selection. So you can either um, group them in a list Use those columns selectively if you need to use the space across the page. You can format them in a single line if you provide uh, consistent spacing between them. And if you're providing any kind of a scale that people have to choose from, provide those instructions so they know what the different scale items mean.